During this video, we will review how to create a NetInspect FAI from a third-party tool known as Discus. Within Discus, you will capture basic information such as part number, part name, drawing number. You will designate whether the, the part is an assembly or a detail. If it is an assembly, you can capture bill of material information within your parts list. You can capture material and special process information for Form 2 of your FAI. And then lastly, you will capture your entire bill of characteristics using the OCR technology with a drawing or some great automated bubbling tools uh, that can be used with 3D models or 2D drawings. For this drawing, I've extracted three notes, some dimensions, including a GDT callout, uh, totaling 10 characteristics. Discus will guide us if there's any edits or changes that are needed to any characteristics before we publish this data to NetInspect. To publish this data to NetInspect, we will go to File, Export, and select Export FAIR to NetInspect. When you do that, Discus will request your NetInspect user ID, password, and company name. Discus will ask you additional information such as do you want to upload balloon drawings, do you want to include drawing name and zone field? And when you're ready, you can select Upload. Within a few seconds, Discus will return an upload successful message, or if it fails, it will let you see the details on why the publish was unsuccessful. Discus will return a unique NetInspect FAIR number. Here you can see we've been returned the number 1957. At this point, I can transition to netinspect.com and log in with my user ID in the upper right hand corner, and then my password and my company name. You may be requested to provide which country you're located in, and then you will be taken to your dashboard. If you know the fair number you're looking for, you can use the search icon to retrieve and open the fair. Here is FAIR 1957, which was published from Discus. You can see all the information I captured under the Part Accountability section will appear in Form 1. The Bill of Material information will appear under the Subassembly section. And then we have information on Form 2 related to our materials and processes. And we have all the characteristics that we identified outlined on Form 3 totaling 10 characteristics. When you publish a fare from Discus, I always recommend starting by specifying the customer of the fare, which you can find just beneath the subassembly section. Once you apply the customer and program field, any unique customer requirements such as a checklist will start to appear on the fair. If you are working with an assembly FAI and Discus published a bill of material list, NetInspect has a link subassemblies button which allows you to search for either the most recently submitted or most recently created fairs and link those into your first article. So here you can see we already had FAIs created for details part one, two, three, and those all have been hyperlinked in to the Bill of Materials section. On form two, we can upload our material and process specifications by using the upload documents link just to the right. The documents uploaded on Form 2 will also appear under the Documents tab. You will see Discus automatically will create a PDF of the bubble drawing and attach that to your NetInspect fare and identify it as the balloon drawing. Any additional documents you attach on Form 2 will appear as reference documents. And then here I could attach anything else such as work order instructions, uh, forging approvals, test results anything else that my customer might want to review as part of the FAIR approval process.
On Form 3, there is an Expand and Collapse check mark. So if I uncheck the box, it will collapse the requirements so that I can efficiently input all of the results. I can add additional results for any characteristics. If any of the results are out of tolerance, they will turn red, and NetInspect will enforce a value to be input in the nonconformance field per AS9102. There is a workflow task tab where I can attach workflows that have sequential steps that are completed before I submit the FAI to my customer. I can also add tasks if I have a one-off request to a user or department and I want them to take action on this first article either before we submit the FAI to our customer or after. Lastly on the checklist tab are a series of questions that your customer might request you to complete as part of the FAI submission. Here our customers provided us some reminders which we can reply to and then we will electronically sign and complete the checklist. At this point we've now fulfilled all requirements. You'll notice NetInspect will enforce all AS9102 required fields such as part number, part name, and manufacturing process reference. Your customer may also request fields to be completed such as supplier code or PO number. When we're ready to submit the FAI, we can scroll down to the signature block at the bottom of Form 1. Here, since we do not have any nonconformances on Form 3, we will mark this FAI as complete per AS9102, and we can mouse over the black question mark to see guidance on how we should respond to each field. And then we can electronically sign all forms at once. Signing field 19 will lock Forms 1, 2, and 3. But to submit the FAI to our customer, we must sign field 21. Sometimes a different user within your company will sign field 21. In some cases, your customer may require it to be a different, different user. Otherwise, I can sign it myself, I can put in comments for my customer, and then submit this FAI. When I return to my fair list, you'll see the FAI is marked as pending buy-off. This means I have fully submitted it to my customer, and I will wait for them to either approve the FAI or disapprove the FAI using NetInspect. If you have any questions or you need any assistance, you can always reach out to our help desk at helpdesk at netinspect.com or by calling 425-233-6176. Thanks very much for your time.